The Battle of Tarapaca occurred on November 27, 1879, during the Tarapaca Campaign of the War of the Pacific. A Chilean column of 2,300 soldiers led by General Luis Artiga recklessly attacked an outnumbering Peruvian contingent of 4,500 troops at Tarapaca, commanded by Gen Juan Buendía, resulting in a harsh defeat. The Chilean 2nd Line Regiment was the most damaged unit, losing almost half of its force, along with its commander Carl Eleuterio Ramirez and his 2nd in command, LT. Carl Bartolomé Viva. Also, the unit lost its banner, which was recovered six months later after the Battle of Tacna. Despite the victory, the Allies could not contest for the domination of the Tarapaca department, abandoning it to Chilean control. Background Following a significant defeat at Dolores Dwell inflicted by an outnumbered Chilean contingent, which cost the Allies all their artillery. The remnants of the Peruvian army were scattered all across the desert, demoralized and almost leaderless. Suarez's soldiers marched to Tarapaca, the former administrative Peruvian capital of the department, to join Buendía. Buendía's army gathers at Tarapaca once reunited by Suarez, after marching across the inclement desert. When Buendi arrived to Tarapaca, dispatched emissaries to gather more fugitives, so, a few days later, his troops grew up to 2,000 men, and on the 26th, Rio's division arrived from Iquique with supplies, apart from the food and water already existing at Tarapaca. In the end, 4,500 soldiers were stationed at Tarapaca. Meanwhile all of this events occurred and acknowledging that a column of exhausted Peruvians under Buendia had stopped near the town of Tarapaca to rest and regain strength, L.T. Carl, Jose Francisco Vergara asked Gen. Artiga to dispatch a reconnaissance force to find out enemy's condition and to inspect the route. Hence, Artiga dispatched under Vergara's command a party of 270 men of the Zapador's regiment, two artillery pieces. 115 riders of the Cazador the Caballo Cavalry Regiment on November 24. Vergara's column took the road to Dibador, camping at about 20 kilometers from Tarapaca. Later, Artiga was informed that the Peruvian numbers were greater than expected, so he sent another column made up of the second line in Artilleria de Marina regiments, the Chacabuco Battalion. 30 more Cazador the Caballo riders and another artillery battery. Next day, Chilean sentries of the Vanguard Division captured an Argentinian muleteer, who reports only 1,500 men at the town, and Vergara asks Artiga for instructions creating great anxiety among Chilean high command and troops. However, the latter soundly underestimated the battle capabilities of the Allies, and did not prepare properly carrying an insufficient amount of food, water and ammunition, with serious consequences later on. Figara, as the same as Artiga did, gave no importance to supply his troops properly, even more. Instead of waiting for the reinforcements to arrive advances over Tarapaca, both divisions were united on the noon of the 26 at Iluga, after Vergara made a reconnaissance of the Peruvian troops. When he did so, saw the arrival of Rio's division, which were in poor condition, giving him the wrong idea of the Allies were demoralized and weary. Besides believing there were only 2,500 soldiers, after both divisions gathered, Artiga assumed the command. His forces added up 2,281 men, only half of Buendia's final contingent. His soldiers were like he thought the Allies were, extremely exhausted and thirsty. Only that day, the Chileans marched for nine hours, totalizing 30 hours of marches across burning sands with no food or water, leading to diminishing the soldiers' fighting capabilities leaving them no condition of presenting battle at all. But since they were at 70 kilometers from the nearest font of supplies at Dolores, Artiga realized that their only salvation was to attack. Battlefield the Tarapaca Oasis was 70 kilometers from San Francisco. 
This commercial town was founded by the Spanish in 16th century over one of the Inca roads that link up the mountains with the sea. A little creek formed by the Andes snow melting runs through the town allowing small plantations downstream. The Peruvian administration buildings are next to rock walls, with the market and the church at the very center. That for an army it is a dead end due to its geography. Chilean battle plan the attack was poorly planned. Since despite being heavily outnumbered Artiga divided his force into three columns anyway as it follows, weakening even more any chance of victory. Carl. Ricardo Santa Cruz with his Zapadores Regiment, one company of the 2nd Line Regiment, and the Krupp cannons were to advance over Quilla Wazar to cut off Buendia's escape route. Carl. Eleuterio Ramirez with seven companies of his 2nd Line Regiment. One Cazador the Caballo Company and some artillery was ordered to enter Tarapaca from Huaracina, pushing the Peruvians from the south. Finally, Gen. Artiga with the rest of his forces would directly attack on the center of the Chilean lines, over Tarapaca. Allied battle plan Buendia was well aware of the Chilean presence, notified by Caceres and Bolognese that one column was advancing over the plateau, and another one was moving towards Tarapaca's den. Buendia ordered his vanguard to return from Pacaca, 12 kilometers north of this position, and concentrates his division on the town, setting skirmishes in every building to fire from a safe position. Also disposed his infantry in a manner that formed a crossfire field. Castanin's artillery men were set on Visadra Hill to defend the den entrance, supported by the Arequipa battalion. Battle. At 3.30 Santa Cruz departed from Iluga while a dense fog covered the surroundings, and an hour later Ramirez and Artiga began their movement. Disoriented by the mist, Santa Cruz marched almost three hours in circles, losing precious time. When the sunrise showed that he was at Ramirez, rearguard resolved to move over his objective. Meanwhile the latter marched to his own. Closing to his destination, Santa Cruz sent his grenadiers to take Quilla Wazar, but they were sighted by the Peruvians' advanced posts which sounded the alarm. Strangely, Santa Cruz refused to use his artillery, losing the chance to overwhelm his enemy. Suarez, realizing his army could be vanquished by the Chilean artillery shooting at them from a higher ground, rapidly evacuated the town, putting his soldiers over the surrounding hills. Immediately Caceres climbed the northern hill as Bolognese did the same on the southern end of Tarapaca. At 1000, the fog vanished and Caceres' division could easily climb Visadra Hill and attack Santa Cruz, column from his rear guard, isolating him from Ramirez and Artiga. Caceres' division was formed by the Zepeter and two de Mayo regiments and later strengthened by the Ayacucho and provisional N1 of Lima battalions of Colonel Bedoya. His 1,500 men outnumbered the 400-men strength force of Santa Cruz. Thus, after 30 minutes almost one-third of the Chilean column was out of combat and lost its artillery, but managed to maintain cohesion and inflict several casualties as well. On the brink of annihilation, Artiga came in Santa Cruz help charging an astonished Caceres and forcing him to stop his attack. Facing a defeat, the Chilean officers prepared the retreat, deploying the infantry guarding the remains of the artillery. But before even moving, the grenadiers sent by Santa Cruz to Quilahuiza returned and charged the Allies again, followed by the infantry. Meanwhile, Ramirez's column was spotted by Bolognese's division, who deployed over the hills on the east. Whilst Buendia garrisoned himself in the town, Ramirez progressed without inconvenience passing through Huarachina and San Lorenzo along the river. But when reaching a small mount at Tarapaca's entrance was received by a dense fire. Incredibly, despite capturing Buendia's intention to outflank him, maintained his order and resumed his march as planned. The Chileans came back for their surprise and charged into the town only to be shot at point-blank range from every house and building, suffering heavy damage.
When Ramirez orders the retreat, simultaneously the grenadiers charge force Caceres to refold at Visagera. More than 50% of his second-line regiment was disabled, counting only with two companies disposed on the Den High borders. After being reinforced by these troops, the Peruvians withdrew to Tarapaca and the battle stopped for a while. Believing the battle was over, the Chilean officers let their extenuated and thirsty men to abandon all order and moved over the river, almost without any ammunition, were waiting for the nightfall to return to Dibador. But the Peruvian high command was planning a second attack, dividing its army into three columns, as equal as the Chileans did. But with the big difference that their greater numbers allowed to divide the forces without weakening them. De Villa's men appeared suddenly over Waracena. Herrera's and Bolognese's divisions attacked the troops at the river, the eastern and western heights surprising the Chileans again. After the first impact, the Chileans gathered up and made a run from the heights trying to evacuate the town. The second-in-command officer of the Artilleria de Marina Regiment formed 50 shooters along with two cannons and held the attack for an hour, until Artiga realized the battle was lost and ordered the retreat. This was carried out with no order whatsoever, with soldiers moving to Dibajor and others to Iluga. The lack of cavalry prevented the Peruvians to inflict more severe casualties, saving the rest of Arteaga's division. The battle was over and the Allied victory was total. Aftermath and consequences The Chilean army lost at Tarapaca, 691 men between dead and wounded, representing 23.6% of the contingent presented to battle. Also, Carl, Eleuterio Ramirez and Bartolome Viva, first and second commanders of the second line regiment were killed in action, and the unit lost its banner. The defeat and poor planning cost Artiaga's command, and strengthened War Minister Sotomayor's prestige, since this was the only action so far planned without him, resulted in a disaster. On the Allies' side, this victory had no effect on the course of actions, leaving Tarapaca and marching to Arica, losing almost half of their troops. Despite the defeat, Chile secured the Tarapaca province.